Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is April 30th, and today we're going to talk about this system rolling through the Pacific Northwest with another one hot on its heels. It's going to roll through tomorrow night, as you can see over the Pacific Ocean, you know, this cold air is spilling out. And you can see the chilly air moving over the area right now. We have a general thunderstorm threat, generally Puget Sound South, Willamette Valley is included, Eastern Oregon. You can see these cumulative form clouds uh, marking that cold air as this moves across the region here. This frontal system brought some pretty good rain, especially to western portions and western slopes of the Cascades, over a half inch here at in Seattle today with that. Take a brief look at the rest of the country as well. Then we're going to take a look at the extended forecast for the Pacific Northwest and see if we can time some of these nice days that might be becoming be, coming between some of these systems here through next week. And I'm going to also highlight a couple of cool websites that I use, and I will put those in the description below near the end of the video. So stay with me here. Now, looking around the rest of the country here, that we have some high wind warnings and advisories for Nebraska, Kansas, South Dakota, as the system moves through and brings some severe weather through central portions of the country. Mm -hmm. We'll look at that briefly. You can see the fire danger through New Mexico, Arizona, and all the way through Vegas and southern Nevada there in southern Colorado. That fire danger continues to plague that region. Um, generally quiet around the rest of the country, except for the severe weather going on, though, uh, unless you include fire danger in that threat, which, which can be pretty severe. But you can see today there is a tornado threat anywhere from Chicago down towards Little Rock, Arkansas, or even down towards Shreveport. Um, lesser risk down there. But yeah, if, you got, if you're traveling, you have friends and, friends and family in these areas, heads up. Here's day two back towards Amarillo, Lubbock, and portions of eastern New Mexico there on into tomorrow. And then you can see the following day on into Monday. So the severe weather active season continues across the south central plains here as we go on into early May. It is that time of year. So back to the Pacific Northwest here, Pendleton, Oregon. They do a good job here with their graphic explaining Northwest weather dangers. You know, mudslide, erosion, heavy showers, flash flooding, hail, lightning, dust storms, which tend to occur mostly in eastern Washington, Oregon, B.C., of course, and through Idaho sometimes, high winds and wind damage. So we do get some some severe weather around here at times. And a dust storm, for example, doesn't have to be the result of severe winds to, you know, to cut down your visibility as you're driving along I-90 or if you're driving through eastern Oregon. So just heads up, when we do have active weather, these threats can exist. So here's the NAM 3 km that shows the system that rolled through this morning. And then you can see the showers moving through eastern Oregon here. Look at this segment of broken line of thunderstorms rolling through eastern Oregon with some decent instability there. And you can see the showers back through the Willamette Valley, southern Washington Cascades also have a thunderstorm threat as well. But it looks like the strongest ones of the day are probably going to be rolling through north and central eastern Oregon as we go through this afternoon. And as we go into the future a bit, you'll see we relax a little bit during the day. Sunday might not be too bad of a day here. And high clouds will be approaching, though, in the afternoon and evening as the next frontal system rolls in very early Monday morning. And you can see that cold air really dives into Oregon again here. So that's good for them, especially the Cascades. That's helped alleviate some of the drought concerns there that are pretty severe on the eastern slopes of the Oregon Cascades. And probably a thunderstorm threat as this moves into the lower elevations of Idaho on through Monday afternoon. So checking out convective available potential energy, I'm going to show you a couple soundings here on what I mean, just what this is. It's basically a measure of instability in the atmosphere, but it can tell you quite a bit on just how unstable the atmosphere is and what kind of thunderstorms you can expect. But you can see this good instability moving through eastern Oregon. That's what's going you know, to be feeding that line of thunderstorms potentially as it moves through eastern Oregon. And you can see this cutoff kind of just southern Puget Sound down through the Willamette Valley and up towards the gorge and the Washington-Oregon border. Chance of a thunderstorm there as well. This is the UW model here. And uh, let's bring this ahead here. We're almost to, let's start this back over again here at 1. So here we are currently. And you can see the showers really kind of concentrate down through eastern Oregon, Willamette Valley, maybe southern Washington Cascades. Generally leaves Seattle out of the shower activity this afternoon, but it's going to be close. So don't be surprised if you still see some showers around the Puget Sound. But the general thunderstorm threat is generally south of Seattle and mainly through eastern Oregon. As you can see, this line of storms there moving through north uh, East Oregon. And now looking here, this is a sounding I pulled from near Portland. And you can see this are generally what our CAPE profiles are like. Not 
characterized by very strong winds and you can kind of see this narrow profile but it is unstable and cape is a measurement of just how of this area here the parcel of the air as it lifts versus the temperature of the atmosphere so then that's how you get that convective available potential energy that's where you get this value in this case would be 559 now taking a look at what we saw in southern uh, central kansas yesterday and you can see this cape value is over 4,000. you can just see this thick area where this parcel of air is much warmer than the surrounding atmosphere so it's going to rise and pretty quickly and that's what caused that severe weather across there and you can see they've got strong winds throughout the profile they turn from south southeasterly and they turn to westerly aloft giving nice turning which you know can create these spinning storms and a tornadic activity that they had yesterday through Kansas. So just thought I'd point that out to you, what that convective available potential energy, I show that graphic quite a bit, kind of highlight the instability in our atmosphere. So there will be a little bit around today, and it, that's why we have a thunderstorm threat here through mainly Oregon. And now looking at the European here, you'll see the system moving through today, and then we get a break, and Sunday might not really be that bad a day, before the high clouds start coming in later on in the afternoon and early Monday morning, another system settles over the region here, maybe a thunderstorm threat through Oregon again or through Idaho. And then maybe a nice day as we go through Tuesday, but you see in the afternoon, we start to draw a weak system. It's probably going to be bringing clouds by when uh, Tuesday afternoon and then a stronger frontal system reaches the area as we go through Thursday and then potential for more systems behind that. This The European model is at the 150 hours right now, but the troughing continues and the systems just continue to roll through the area today. It's great for the gardens, but it's really generally pretty chilly, you know, when you compare that to a regular August, uh, April, sorry. Now here's that cold air moving through the system, moving through the area today, associated with the system moving through today. And then the next batch of cold air here comes in Monday morning. You see it targets mostly Oregon again. And then you'll see maybe we'll get a nice day on the day Wednesday. Check that out. Some of that cold air stays out of the region here. And then we start to swing this back through again maybe next week. And so we'll see how this goes. We'll see how much this trough changes. That's still several days out at this point. And here is 18,000 feet. You see the general troughing of the system moving through and the uh, potential for a ridge building over the Pacific Northwest tomorrow. Transient ridge brief, and that's going to allow the clouds to move in pretty quickly Sunday afternoon and evening. As that system rolls through Monday, then another ridge builds here onto Tuesday and Wednesday. Maybe we'll get a couple nice days Tuesday and Wednesday across much of the area. I think you know maybe southern BC can be included in that, but it, you, you can see the troughing is starting to affect northern portions of British Columbia. It's probably going to be streaming clouds in north portions of Vancouver Island as well. And then you can see the troughing continue over the Pacific Northwest on into the extended here, but... We don't want to go too far out just yet, but the general pattern is for the troughing and the systems to continue to roll through next week. Now, this is the GFS versus the GFS Ensemble. So this is an operational run. We take all the data we have, and then we run this model out. And that's what the GFS operational model is. And then we have the GFS Ensembles, where we take those initial conditions and we tweak them slightly. We change them a bit, and then we run those out. Those are what's called Ensembles. And then as we run all those ensemble models, we average that out, and that's called the mean. That's what that M is there for. So we have the GFS ensemble mean here versus the GFS control run. As I put this into motion here, you'll notice in the short term, as is usual, the, mo the models are in good agreement. But you'll see this GFS start to uh, disagree with itself coming up here. Well, the ensembles disagree with the control one, I should say. Now you see the ridging coming up here through Wednesday and it may give us a nice day Wednesday. The control run has a little bit more of a ridge here versus just the more, you notice this is more smoothed out at this point because this is an ensemble mean. You're averaging 30 different ensemble runs at this point. But you can see they have a good agreement on the Gulf of Alaska troughing here, trough across the central portion of the country, kind of a, a ridge that's getting broken down here as this trough swings through the area. So really good agreement here with the control and the ensemble mean as we go on in through later next week. And that's really the story, and that's all you can take away from this at this point as systems will continue to move through the area and through next weekend. And then the GFS control starts to build a ridge a bit, and you can see it start to disagree here as it goes into the extended, a deep trough over the west portion of the lower 48. And this trough on the control is definitely much more in the central portion of the country here as a ridge starts to build in into 
uh, Pacific Northwest. I'm going a little bit further out here, and then you can see a bigger disagreement here. Ridge over the southwest versus trough. So this is what forecasters look at, and this is why it's so hard to speak with any confidence on what kind of weather you're going to get into the extended. It'll be very tough. Now, this is the GFS here. This was the 12Z run, this morning's run. You can see we stay generally below north, maybe another a couple nice days here, I should say, Sunday, and this highlights Wednesday, but generally below normal through about May 9th, and then it shows kind of a warm-up, and this is the time of year where, where we get these warm-ups, so maybe some, maybe just a little bit of hope. I'm just showing you guys this to have a little bit of hope for some warm weather as we go on into the future. Now looking at the European model here, as we go on in through Saturday, let's see how warm we get Sunday. This is the most recent European run. As we go through the day Sunday, you can see we get upper 50s, maybe into the low 60s tomorrow. So we might have a nice day before these clouds start to really stream into the area Sunday evening. So that would be nice. Look at eastern Washington getting up into the low 70s, Yakima there, and Willamette Valley nice and warm here on the day tomorrow. Put this into motion yet again and come back into Monday. The system's moving through the area. You see how the temperatures have cooled down, the peak heating about 0Z here, or assuming so. And then as we go into Tuesday, chilly air over the area, but we warm up a little bit on Tuesday. You can see mid and upper 50s, Puget Sound, Willamette Valley, Eastern Washington warms up decently on Tuesday. Going through Wednesday here, look at this. I mean, we might get some nice warm temperatures across eastern Oregon, Washington. Look at up towards 80 degrees here for Yakima, probably up into the mid-60s in portions of western Washington here. So Wednesday might end up being a nice day as well before another frontal system moves into the area and we cool down yet again. So now looking at the 6 to 10 day, you can see we have above average precipitation and you saw why. These troughs just continue to move through the area and really just continue to bring this precipitation into the area. And the reason why portions of the Cascades and East are highlighted in this above is because we have kind of a convective feel to this. You know, we're bringing in cold air aloft in these systems. We're not just bringing in low level moist systems where they're getting wrung out on the west side of the Cascades. Some of this moisture is going to get over because this air is very cold and we're going to have some convection and some instability associated. So they're going to get above normal precipitation, six to 10 day range. Now this is eight to 14 day temperature outlook. And again, we saw why this is going to occur with the persistent troughing over the Pacific Northwest. Our special La Nina spring in our second year in a row is keeping us a very chilly April and it's gonna start off the beginning of May chilly also. And yeah, and so, you know, I'm gonna be watching week to week to see what kind of odds we have for La Nina going into next year as well, because right now we have about a 50 to 55% chance of another La Nina next year. So snow lovers might rejoice with that, but we'll find out. We have a long way to go before that comes up, and we'll see what the models trend as far as what they predict as far as our La Nina versus El Nino conditions. Now here's a website I wanted to show. If anybody travels around, this is a pretty cool site, Aviation Weather Center. Again, I'm gonna put this in the description below. And if you're going to Dallas, let's say, you can click on any one of these areas and you can see the aviation discussion. It talks about timing of the system and what kind of winds. And this is very important to aviators at any one of these areas you can click on. You can go to New York, Albany, Miami. You can go to Los Angeles, Seattle. This is a very good little discussion here as you can, you know, you can kind of time things out if you're flying or even if you just live in this area. It's kind of a nice little forecast discussion. Now there's also this option too. For example, Portland, if I click on this Portland area, you go to forecast and forecast discussions and you can see what exactly the National Weather Service is thinking and you can read this and this will help you get more familiar with weather in your area. So if you wanna know more, the, the area forecast discussion is a really good place to start. I recommend looking at a surface map or looking at infrared satellite imagery to try to see what they're talking about and try to compare this to what they're talking about here and that will help you become educated on what's coming your way. Now, this is another thing too. This is the weather station at my house. This is Weatherlink. Davis Vantage Pro 2 is the station I use. And you can see all this information at my house. I have wind speed, wind direction, I have the humidity, temperature, sunset, sunrise, it gives you all this really good information. I even have an AirLink air quality sensor outside. My quality is good right now. It, you know, it, it shows you your high wind speed. It shows you your wind directions. I have two different anemometers up there and it gives a wind rose, which gives you direction and frequency of the direction. 
current rain looks like actually got 0.49 inches today, just under half an inch. So yeah, and it gives you monthly total and you can go on to make, you can make charts. So this is really nice. And you can see it's pretty sunny outside right now. The UV index is five. Look at the solar radiation is really high right now. So we're definitely getting a sun break outside and I can't wait to get up there and enjoy that. But I'll put this link below too. If you guys want to buy a Davis Vantage Pro, you get the Weatherlink package with it and it's all wireless and it's solar powered and you can set it up on your house or your yard. It's really fun stuff to have at your house and you can broadcast this live online and you know other hobbyists in the National Weather Service can see your observations. So yeah, this is my anemometer here too. You can see my solar panels, but my anemometer is here and you can see the guy wires at this pole and I have a nice wind run here southwest and south wide open exposure here so i get some pretty good winds so it's fun watching when we get decent winds rolling through here the highest gust i've gotten at 10 years in this location was 60 miles per hour we hit 58 once and we've hit 54 four separate times and i think we've hit over 50 in 13 different storms since i've been at this location in 10 years so it's really fun to get this going the kids love it so check it out if you want i'll put that in the description below vantage Davis Vantage Pro 2. So yeah, if you guys are down the Willamette Valley, Eastern Oregon, check out these showers moving around today, especially those in Eastern Oregon. There might be a, a decent line of thunderstorms moving through the area today. And then we're probably going to get a nice day tomorrow. It's looking like um, before this next system rolls in early Monday morning, and then maybe another break on Wednesday, and then another system after that. And then perhaps the troughing continues. So we're going to continue thunderstorm activity across Pacific Northwest on and through the next 10 days off and on. So we'll continue to take a look at that as we go through the days coming up here. But I had a good trip out there, saw uh, three tornadoes, none of them especially exciting, but there was a couple nice pictures I got, but it's always a good time going out there. And yeah, so... <clears throat> Uh, we'll do this again tomorrow. We'll take a look at these systems rolling in, and I'll find some other cool things to look at Pacific Northwest weather-wise so you guys can continue to broaden your horizons meteorologically. Um, so, yeah, guys, have a good day. Enjoy tomorrow. It should be a pretty nice day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.